Good morning. How many of you are uh, have kindergartners that are coming in? Okay, okay, okay. So a year ago, exactly, I was in your shoes. I was a parent with a kid coming into kindergarten. The difference is I didn't attend this. Um, I specifically, my husband and I made a very conscious decision because we were told if you go to the Seacrest tour and, and you go engage with them, you're going to see it and you're going to love it. And you're going to pay for that education. And we were like, we're not going to do that. And I'm here, I have a kindergarten, so we are doing that. So we, we said, we're not going to do that. We're not going to go to that tour. We're not going to talk to them. We didn't talk to Seacrest until April. So I'm here to basically give you words of wisdom so you don't make the same mistake we did, or so that you can go into it with a little bit more of an education of how you can make a, a, a conscious decision about how you uh, decide to come to Seacrest. So the first thing was I had the one thing right, which is don't make a decision about where you're going to send your child based on gut. Uh, there's lots of research that says that when we do that, no matter what, it could be school, it could be anything, if we're doing it based on emotion or, or spidey sense, as I call it, or the gut feeling, you're not going to make a very wise decision. So, yes, Seacrest is a beautiful school. The flexible arrangements and the technology here is incredibly amazing. But that shouldn't be the one thing that makes you say, I'm going to do that. Because, um, as Dr. Pernero Gawais mentioned, this can be just a kindergarten thing for you. It could be a K through five. It can be a K through eight. So this really is an investment and a time that you want to commit to and you want to feel comfortable that you're making a decision for the long run. Um, so, and that goes for you know here or any school that you might be looking at on the coast or over the hill. However, you're making that decision, um, you know, think about what that might be. The next thing was um, that we didn't. When we decided to engage with Seacrest, we, uh, we did come and like I said, we looked and we were like, everyone here is so incredibly nice. When you do the tour and you talk to the ambassadors, the, the aptitude and the way you engage with the kids are like, I want my kid to end up like that. Like, that's awesome, right? Um, and we had to really think, we know that this feels right and there's so many good things about this, but how do we weigh that decision? And so the second thing I'm going to encourage you to think about is not to think about how you went to school. So I grew up here, uh, so did my husband. I was I went to Fairlawn, we went to Alvarado, we both went to Cooney, we went to Half Moon Bay High. And at that time there was no secrets. I'm looking at somebody who went to school with me. There was no secrets. We had Wilkinson, um, but there was it was um, rare that somebody went over the hill and ended up at Sarah or Notre Dame, and those were like the two schools people went to. So. We looked at that and we just thought, we've come so far in our careers and, and things have changed for us personally. And then just school options and education approaches have changed so much. We just couldn't possibly imagine that the education for our daughter would be the same as what we went through. So that's the second thing I'm going to ask you to realize faster than I did. Uh, right, remember, because I'm here to, to not just talk about Seacrest and how happy we are with him, but just helping you avoid that extra stress. Um, so there's a couple things I would recommend, and, and one is to just look at your family logistics. Uh, for us, somehow, if it, that's things like proximity, the, the schedules, um, there might be uh, food allergies or other things that the child's sensitive to or other special needs. Uh, so family logistics, for us, some things that stood out was our daughter does have food allergies, and we felt like Seacrest would prepare to handle that, and, and it's gone well. Uh, the second thing was the schedule. Um, uh, our public schools, some of them end at 11.20, and that was not going to work for us. Seacrest has very few minimum days, uh, and they go until 2.30 for kindergarten, and I think 3.15 for any grade after that until middle school. So for us, that was a big deal. Then the next thing to look at besides, and those are just things that stood out for us. The next thing was family goals, um, and so uh, if I had asked my daughter at the time, like, what's important to you, and she was like, lunch. <laughs> and so we were like, okay, we need to ask us some other questions and start thinking about other things that might be important to us or to her. Um, so we talked to her preschool teachers, we got an idea of what was going on with her. Um, some other things that were important to us was communication. Uh, we like to know what's going on. That's our personality, my husband and I. Uh, so you get regular and frequent communication with Seacrest. That is something I can guarantee you'll get. 
The other thing we looked at was having a healthy work-life balance for us and our child. Um, and so we liked that there were, uh, Gabe had mentioned this, we liked that there were lots of different programs she could go to without us having to sign up for a lot of aftercare activities. So there's art, there's drama, there's Spanish, there's PE, there's lots of things. Um, the other thing that we looked at that stood out for us personally was the aftercare program. Janice is here. Jaws is awesome. Um, on Fridays, I have a pretty flexible schedule, and I tell my daughter, do you want me to pick you up or go to Jaws? And she ditches me every time for Jaws. So uh, those are some things that stood out for us. The other thing I'll mention that I forgot on the work-life balance that you're going to want to ask the ambassadors and the teachers is about um, the approach the school has is less about handouts, less about homework, more about preparing the children to complete real life projects or tasks. Um, so they can explain it a lot better, but there is more of a continuous assessment approach rather than like you get grades. And again, here, this is where the approach from when we were kids is just completely different. Um, so, but we like that. We like that there was a, a way for her to not have to um, just do a lot of work for nothing. So anyway, those are the things that stuck out for me, stuck out, stuck out. Uh, we do speak English here, it's interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, those are the things that stuck out for me, and I just, like I said, I would encourage you to think not about just your gut feeling uh, and not about how you had it as a kid, and then start to ask some questions about family logistics as well as goals that you want to um, accomplish for your child and your family, frankly. Uh, and, then, and then ask the questions, and everybody here has probably fielded all of those questions, and I'll be here after if anyone wants to talk to me. So good luck in the search and have fun.